now. We shall start on time now. Again, thank you for watching. My name is Jess. I'm a physiotherapist. I fix people with joint pain. And today comes to about day 53 or day 54 of MCO. So now I reflect back to uh, first day of MCO, day one, until now. What have I done? I actually tried my first Facebook Live thanks to this COVID-19. Yeah, I managed to try to talk about physiotherapy and how to take care of your body through Facebook Live. And then actually I, rest, I received quite a number of good feedbacks. Yeah. Okay, let me share with you what are the topics I've done so far. <laughs> okay. I talk about tips to prevent knee pain during running. I talk about top five running tips to prevent shin splint. I talk about tips to swim fast and injury free. I talk about indoor spinning with power. I talk about how to run fast. I talk about um, effective indoor triathlon training. I talk about low back pain for cyclists. I talk about plantar fasciitis. I talk about ankle sprain. I even talk about how to get more aero when you are cycling without getting lower back pain, how to improve mental health, how to help with your ITB pain when you run. I cover mountain bike, essential skill. And today I decided to talk about trail running. Okay. And the reason why I choose to talk about downhill running, yeah, because um, I got a lot of uh, injured trail runner. They injured when they are running downhill, especially those continuous downhill. The long stretch one hurts their knee a lot. Okay, so a bad downhill running form or technique will hurt your knee. Okay, so once your knees are injured, you will have to take a few weeks, some people up to a few months to recover. Okay, that's why I decided to talk about running downhill. How to run fast and efficiently. Okay, because while everyone, when they go for trail running, they may not want to get podium, but at least you are aiming for how to finish the trail running safely and then injury free. Okay, safely and injury free, and then talk about your personal best. Yeah. So for those of you who just come in, my name is Jess. Again, I'm a physiotherapist. If you don't know me, uh, I fix people with joint pain and then I cover, um, you know, throughout the MCO, I have been doing uh, quite a number of Facebook Live, talk about how to take care of your body, how to exercise with correct form to prevent injury. And today I'm very honored to have a uh, trail running coach to talk about how to run downhill fast and efficiently okay so without talking too much rubbish yeah so let me invite mr ray malaysia trail running coach hi hi hello hello how are you all everyone mm. we hi, have seven pairs of eyes watching us so That's you nice. may start talking now yeah, thanks. Thanks for everyone uh, sparing your time to listen uh, to uh, this topic. And I also will be very happy that uh, everyone is very uh, excited, wanted to go out, but still not yet because uh, our trail are still not open yet, uh, officially, uh, the whole entire Malaysia. And also don't try to go and adventure yourself into the trail by yourself because it's gonna not going to be good because if once you're injured, or once you get lost, nobody knows you are inside, all right? So stay at home, stay safe and still stay at home, okay? And uh, today I will talk uh, talk about uh, how to run down efficiently, but you can do this uh, at home, but I will come back to this very, very soon, okay? All right, uh, my name is Ray. I used to trail, uh, my, my, uh, my call is to trail, uh, trail running, okay? And to trail, to train people to run in trail and also train people how to use uh, road running, okay, come from road running into the trail, okay, using a proper way. 
okay, because uh, some of the road running technique it might not be suitable in the trails because trail is very complex when you come to uh, running on the uh, obstacles, uh, mixed terrain, hills, rockies, river, and so on. So, so. What you mentioned, uh, other than roads, everything is called off trails, right? So if anyone here is new in trail, yeah, this is the right channel you to come in and to listen to our thing. Because uh, people ask me questions uh, about the trail running and possible ask about dance too. Okay, uh, right. Uh, if uh, now we don't talk about too much and we will click to the topics. So right, downhill is one of the uh, hottest topic in my coaching period and also in my coaching lifetime as well. Because a lot of people ask me the same questions. I'm so fear to go downhill. How to do it? Fear. Listen, uh, the fear of this word. The fear is number one. Okay. Number two, people will always ask the second question. Number second best question is how do I do it? Okay. Do it safely. Okay. Without injure my leg. Okay. Thirdly, how do I do fast? And also going down, okay, to save my time because a lot of people say I go up very slow, but I need to go down, take up my time to save up my time without gonna any uh, cut off time in any races, some of the things like that, okay, right. So today I will show you the uh, uh one of my uh, I'll show you slide. In, uh, give me a second, okay, all right. Wait ah, uh, let me let me get mm. your slide on ah. Uh. Okay. Okay. Right, everyone. I think you saw these pictures familiar. Not the faces ah. Uh. I'm not talking about faces. Can everyone see any similarity of every each of them in this picture? If you can realize, five of them have the same form when they're running downhill. You see the hand all wide open balance themselves okay so this is the most of the picture that you saw you admired okay you maybe you admire the person but you don't know what they are doing and are they doing correct or not so now i'm going to tell you everyone here they have the same position and what they're doing for downhill they are very safe doing it and they are doing very fast okay and uh I'll show you another one. All right. This second picture, this second picture, set of picture, is a no, 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 no while you're doing. Why? The first picture that you saw, the person who jumping off on the cliff, this is no. This is when you jump off a cliff like this, you're probably going to injure your knee, okay? And also your ankle. And your whole body weight is going to be impact of your lower body. And then this one as well, Yes, one is a lifetime you want to do photo boom, yala, can, uh, but don't, you can do it on the photo boom session, but don't do it when you are on the event or you are on, uh, uh, concentration on your racing, okay? Please don't do this as well, okay? And also the third picture here, please don't do extension of your leg, you see? This leg is very straight and extension. This is will cause your heel, your knee, and even the, your, your glutes, all will pay okay so these are the wrong the wrong uh position and what you see previously this is the professional who do it correctly and nicely done okay so i will go point to point why how they do it and what to avoid and how to start it okay right right uh what before we start to learn how to go downhill or we say how to go down fast and efficient we need to avoid three things here, okay? First, look at the first picture. The lady, the whole the whole body was leaning too far back or leaning too forward, okay? This is called leaning too far back, okay? Leaning too far back, that means your whole body weight is on the back. So if you lean too much on the back, your whole portion of your leg uh, weight is going to be very heavy very very heavy that is where these are the most common and and can say that 90 over percent of new trail runners or maybe some of the intermediate trail runners they are doing this pose 
So when they, you do, you, when you run down long, long enough like this, you're going to have leg, knee, ankle, heel, foot pain. All this will be happen. Okay. And then what if you lean too much forward? This is the, the, the picture that down here. This is called lean too much forward. So that is where they, when you, if you lean too much forward, your speed will drive you very fast. Then you uncontrol your leg. You cannot control your leg how to, how to post it. So also very dangerous. The, th the third picture at the top here, the second top here, don't overstrike. See, if you overstrike, you see your leg is open up too much of length. And that is where that energy wasted. Down here is supposed to be saving 90 over of energy, not supposed to output energy. You're supposed to recover while you're downhill. You're not supposed to overstrike your overstrike your leg, overstrike your foot, and you lost energy. So these are the things that you must to avoid. If not, you're gonna see Jess lah. Am I right, Jess? Hey, MCO, I'm open, you know. You know. Yeah, open, MCO right? is open, ah. Uh. So open, don't you know? I don't mind, ah. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, next part here. Okay. We will talk about how to, what is the top five downhill technique, the tips, okay? So before I go through the tips, please remember these simple steps, okay? It's a called a running cue, okay? Running cue, it's a got, got sequence one. One, two, three, four, five. So four, five of this point, it comes like a running cue. Every time you go downhill, remember this five sentence. Okay, remember of this all these five sentences. Okay, so next time you go and run out, find yourself running a downhill, remember these running cues. Okay, first one, run downhill leaning slightly forward, not over forward. Okay, bend your knees slightly as you run downhill. This is very important because you can't afford to have extension knee. Okay, knee extension while you are, when, when, while you are uh, uh, approaching to the ground because you're gonna hurt your knee very bad. So bend your knees. Okay. How to do this later? I will come to this. Okay. Run with the short, quick strike back. Yeah, okay. Just now I read this saying. Oh, don't over strike. Okay. That is why that I didn't mention here. Short, short, but plus a quick strike. Okay. Short, quick strike. Okay. We call it, uh, we call it a uh, short strike length. Okay, if you if you have a watch in your uh in your in your features that have called strike length, so you can use that for a measurement. I also will come back to that technically. Will tell you how to refer this. Okay, run using your arms for balance. Ah, uh, say you already saw the first the first slide of the pictures. Everyone is wide open the hand. Okay, right. How to balance? Okay, stay last but not least. Stay relaxed and confident okay so if all the above four you have but your your last one relax and confidence lack of that sorry you will still back to zero you need to start over again okay so relax and confident okay don't say that i scared this way steep i don't want to go so far i want to just walk only yes to be sorry you are not confident so, uh, very straightforward to telling you, all right? So, whatever what you want to be changed, you can't change because of you can't stay relaxed and confident, okay? Right, come. I will go one by one for all the tips here, okay? Run downhill, leaning slightly forward. So, can you see on this picture? This picture already been shown. Every, these two person running downhill, you see their upper body is leaning forward. Never at the back, never lean back, okay? All right, you see the angle of the second picture of this person, okay? He also on leaning forward. So as you can see, they when they're leaning forward, their foot strike is not not never extend as well. They are in the very comfortable footsteps. So as you can see, uh, the knee also bent, okay? Nicely bent. And then they never struggle to be like a person like this, as I showed you before, see? This is leaning to back. This is to over striking, and this is leaning too much forward. And as you can see, this this person they are more comfortable. Okay, nothing wrong with them. They are doing correctly. So this is the first thing: running down, lean slightly forward, 
no need too much. Okay. Second one, bend your knees slightly. So as you can see here, the first lady who wearing the uh, yellow t-shirts here, you see when she doing when she doing uh from the rocky, she want to pass down. You see all the knees are bent, nicely bent. They never extend at all. They are bending their knees, and then they never never jump off. They just push off only. And look at this guy with the blue jacket. You see when he touched down, even he touched down on the ground, you see the knee is bent, never extend. So the third person who without t-shirt, you look at the guy, see the whole leg is extended, never bent. So if this uh the wrong position, this is the wrong one. Okay, look at the wrong one. The correct one is gonna be these two. Okay, so bend your knees slightly. So how to how to train this to uh, run downhill to bend your knees? There is a drill. Okay, uh, Jeff, I'm gonna show a short mm. video. A mm. short video. Mm. One of the exercise. Uh, mm. Let me share. <clears throat> okay, while waiting for Ray's uh, slideshow and video, if you have any question about how to run downhill. Or if you want to ask about pain when you run down here, feel free to put your question in the comment. We will come back to your question after we talk about theory. Um, is your video ready? Yeah, Ray? Yeah, ready, ready. All right. Um, so okay. everyone, I will play this video. This is one of the uh, exercising you can do at home. No need to do outside. Do at home. How do you go downhill by bending your knee and reduce the impact? This is how you do. It. See how it does. You just bounce a little bit up and you go back neutral. You see, your knee is bending. You see, it's bending. You just find an object to support uh, the back of the leg. Okay, you no need to try so much of forward. You just little bit by little bit. If you are good enough, you can go much more forward. It is up to you. So you will lose balance a little bit. This one also will uh, uh, give you a uh, forward uh balancing the balancing mobility and reduce impact and bend your knee okay to make you stronger when you are doing downhill okay mm -hmm. right so it's done it's like i go so go go back to my or origin slide are you guys okay. following so far is coach ray okay yeah if it's too fast let us know yeah if you're mm. okay just type okay yeah, Ray, you want to drink some water while they are typing? Okay, okay. So yeah. if you think the it's okay. okay, type okay, yeah. yeah. At the meantime, okay, I let yeah. Ray drink some water. <laughs> okay. We talk a lot, yeah. 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 Right. So let us know if you're too fast. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So we, I, we just uh, uh, ended for the bend of your knee slightly, and I already show you the exercising. Okay, so do the exercising. He actually got more than that exercise. So I just show you one of the example. Okay, so if you want to know more, come and join my class. I will teach you just very quick and you will learn very fast. All right, come, next one. Okay, the strike, short, quick strike. Okay, the third one is the short plus quick strike. How to run a long, a short and quick strike without doing long. Okay, let me explain the long one. The long one is the above of the picture. The picture that you see, that you see, that one is a long one. Okay, what you see that this is called long. Okay, this is long. Long one that means the moment that you approach to a, a strike, this is where the where do you see long. Okay, and the third person here is you are handing foot out from the front, and the back will be lifted, and the fourth one will be deep. And after you high knee again, that is where that you explosive jump forward. So as long as when you do long strike, your last your last movement you're gonna be explosive jump off. So what what did I say in the beginning before you do your trail running? If you jump off, if you push off, you will end up wasting energy and you will lose your cue and lose your footsteps. So this is where that long power strike is. A no no. If you want to know that your watch how to look at strike length, you actually that the the watch itself they show value of the strike length. Okay, so long strike length will be sixty to eighty steps 
per minute. This is called long one. So if you do short one, let's see at the below. The below short one will show you 90, per, uh, 90 steps and above per minute. I myself, I do uh, around 120, 120 to 130 per minute. Okay. Sometimes will be 150, depending what kind of a trail, what kind of a terrain. Okay. So if you are still not understand where to find your stride length in your watch, you just go to your watch app store or you go to your quick menu. You open up your 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 customized menu. You find a a, a function called it stride length. Okay. So you show that show that stride length into your watch while you are running. So you know that how many steps per minute that are you doing. So this is the most economic way. So look at the short stride length. You see when you do short stride length, you are more easy. So short stride length will help you three things. First, you save energy. Second, you save landing. Okay, because your shorter strike, your shorter strike, you can save landing because you are not far, far away, far strike away, and you are not on the on the what they call off the ground too much. The thing is, your ground time also will reduce. The much more ground time, the, the more ground time that uh, you are on the ground, the faster you are. It's not the higher ground time you will quicker. No. Longer, longer ground time, a uh, longer uh, above the ground time, you will lose all your time. Okay, so that is where that you see why horses, uh, horses, uh, goats, even uh, a tiger, a leopard. You you look at their running. Their strike is actually not long. They are very short but quick. Okay, so that is my that is my meaning of doing why sh short strike length. Okay, how to do short strike length? For example. I will show you a video. This is how people do a steep downhill, but the stride length is very, very short and quick. Okay. Uh, uh, Jess, I'm gonna video, show right? Yes, okay. I'm gonna show okay. one video. Mm. Wow, I've seen some people asking some questions. Yeah, we welcome your question. Please put your question down in comment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is your video ready? Yeah. Yeah, um, my video is ready. So uh, okay. I will I will replay this two times because it's going to be very quick and it's just seven seconds a day. So look at it. Look at the person. Okay. Look at the person. Look at his leg. Don't look at his face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> look at the leg. Okay. Look, huh? Watch, guys. Watch. Watch. See the sign line? See? It's just like very, very normal. So I let me replay again. See, no extension at all. See, no bouncing. Replay again, show you. There is no bouncing. You look at the guy, you see his chest, no bouncing at all. No bouncing. So, okay, yeah, done. So, everyone understand? Look at the difference. So, there is a difference when you do very short side length. I don't need to show you the wrong one. Uh. If you see the wrong one, you, you will feel, look like the person is very clumsy. So I, I will skip that. All right. Uh, okay. I will go back to my slide. Uh, Jeff, you want me to okay. answer a bit okay. more questions before sure. we let's, move on? Let's answer some questions first. First question, okay. Shermin. Are you Kampung Adidas? What do you think about ah. Kampung Adidas? Uh, actually, I, I wanted to, my last time is we're going to talk about shoe. So, never mind. Uh, we will later. just move on. Huh? Later, uh, later, uh, later we'll come back to you. Huh? Yeah, well, later I come back to you. Later I come back to you. Yes. Yeah, before, uh, I because I, uh. myself, I have pers personally, uh, I have story about Kampung Adidas. So, when I first started hiking, my friend told me to wear Kampung Adidas. So, the shoe was okay. So one day when I was hiking at Gunung Nuang, I was wearing Kampung Adidas and I didn't land properly as I was going downhill and I twisted my leg and I broke my uh, bone in my ankle. Okay, so, so you have to be careful if your ankle is weak because Kampung Adidas did not give you a good support around your ankle. So if you have history of ankle sprain, if your ankle is not strong, Please don't do, uh, please don't wear Kampung Adidas when you go to uh, Gunung Gunung, okay? 
yeah, it's it's not it doesn't give you good stability. Yeah, so it can cause more problem. Hmm? Actually, mm. we, we can summarize to understand this the uh, compound disease that is no support, no support mm. on the knee, no support on the toe. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. totally rubber. So yeah. it's very simple. You just bring out the shoe. You try to and, squeeze like that. You yeah. can see, uh, you, you will squeeze like like a like a rubber band. <laughs> yeah. Ah, and a lot, so, a lot, a lot of time, they would, people tell, oh, you know, I go to go climb K, climb KK mountain. You see all the portal where Kampung Adidas, you know. Of course, these people are so fit. They go up and down every day. They wear slippers also can go because they have strong leg, strong ankle. And we do not have. Yeah, so bear yeah. in mind. Paul, question. What is the percent of cadence in increase and shorten of stride? Hmm. Okay, Paul. Uh, cadence we don't talk about percent uh. cadence we talk about uh, based on the uh, like a car car is called RPM okay so mm. RPM is just like when you do cycling you cycling also got the RPM so the leg as well is also calculated as the RPM okay so if you want to have a good cadence but you must ask yourself first are your stride length shortened enough okay because if you you have do not have enough shortened stride, you can't produce cadence as well. Because some people when they have a uh, heavy leg, uh, that means heavy leg, that means uh, they have very huge muscle. Those muscular people, person, very muscular person, but they have a very uh, small calf muscles, but very big quad. Okay, so the quad muscle is too very heavy to uh, uh, to take uh, the weight of their calf. So some so these people. They have a strike problem and they have very heavy weight of quad so they can't do cadence increasing so what what i mean here is uh try to focus on your strike first how do you put your strike per length okay the length of the strike so they made a foot to foot in between the strike length so how do you manage this so you need to find the most comfortable strike length that you can manage then only you train according to the cadence uh, per minute, okay? Based on this uh, uh, training, uh, training uh, uh, to understand yourself before you go for asking for percentage, increasing percentage of cadence. So mm. Ask, uh, do the uh, stride length first. Understand the good stride length first, okay? okay. Because if I, if I told you to do uh, 180 or 150, whatever the amount I give you, I tell you, oh, please do this amount of stride length. But you can't manage to do it because you can't find the most suitable stride length that mm. where you have. Yeah. So yes. this is yes. These uh, mm. numbers are still a number. Numbers is just for a reference. But the actual life, you must understand this number does it suit you or not? Okay. Mm. You must also have it. Yeah. Yes. So Ray, you are saying you must first find your comfortable cadence before we talk mm. about how much to increase or how much to shorten. Yeah. First, find your yeah. comfortable cadence first because it, because a lot of people when they do road running, you you talk about cadence because the road condition, the road running, their the road condition is stable, and uh, yeah. you, you don't have much obstacle. But when you do trail running, there's so much of obstacle, so it it's hard to give you a specific. Um, specific yes and, yeah very very difficult to give us right but that's why mm. you need to train a lot of different downhill different downhill terrain what i mean say different downhill terrain you need to try for uh mud terrain uh rocky terrain and sandy terrain you mm. need to need to try all this until you find which is the best strike length to that terrain Okay, does not mean you can use the strong lane for the sand and to the muddy. No, <laughs> everything is subjective variable. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Michelle asking, does shoe and socks play an important role for downhill running? Uh, not really. As long as, as long as your shoelace, your shoelace lace it very tight. Okay, tight enough to support your your leg will not push off. I just show you example. But of course, must wear trail shoe, shoe lah. Uh, of course, you must wear a trail yeah. shoe lah. Okay, you must wear a trail <laughs> shoe. So make make so for example, this is my this is your leg. 
So you need to type where is the where is the title that you need to type is this part, this upper part, the last this part. So in order to lock this part, so your leg will not push to the front and your leg will not wobble inside the shoelace. Mm. That is where that if you have loosened your leg into the inside the shoe, that is that your your foot is wobbling inside the shoe. So that is where that you are oh, unstable. Black toenail, black toenail also. All toenail yes, black toenail like. as well. Yes. Uh. So if you wear a shoe, you still need to be stable. Stay stable as possible. Because if you too much room moving in your shoe, that is where that you are more uh, uh, losing balance. Okay, mm. up and down in your shoe. Actually, you are not losing balance in the trail. You are losing balance in your own mm. shoe. Yeah. Uh, Rick, I have a question to ask you. When we talk about a mm. tie shoe lacing technique, right? How tight mm. is tight? How do you know the shoe lace is tight enough? Okay, how tight is tight, right? Is mm. the when you before you tie, uh, before you tie, make sure that you may you make yourself a uh, lock lace. Okay. This is called lock lace. Uh, 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 the lock lace of the uh, uh, I don't know whether you all see, but uh, if you don't understand how the 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 lock lace will keep the foot pushing in front, uh, I will share a video later on. <laughs> I need to find <laughs> on the ah. website. Uh, okay. later I share it on. Later I will share. It, then we'll play that video. I will show you on there, and I will show you the show you the link. Ah, uh, so yeah. I will do a lock. I will do a lock lace. So after I do a lock lace, I will pull. I will pull. I will pull the lace. The lace will do, it will automatically pull down my my inseam. Okay, my inseam of my foot. Okay, it will pull down. So once it's wrapped and pull down, when I feel feeling first level of tight, okay, still okay. Then you pull second level of tight. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Okay, then you just lock. Lock your uh, do your lacing, show your lacing, and then that's it. And then you pass, you pass on the ground. You push your foot in front, see whether it will touch your toe box or not. Or you move your toe inside there, see whether got room or not. So if we have room, able to move, never touch, never touch in front of the toe box. Yes, you are, you are secure. Hmm. Okay, mm. and also one more technique. I remember I went to your class. You show me like, uh, when you put on your shoe, if you are able to take out your shoe without yes. opening up the lace, that the means lace. the shoe is too loose. Yes, correct. Mm? That is one of the technique that tell you, are you, uh, lacing your shoe tight and uh, secure, uh, with your foot? Very easy. After you tie and wear, you wear your shoe, you tie already, and you just. Bring your hand, <laughs> take off. If your hand can jump out just like that, so that means it's too loose. Okay. Pretty easy. Yep. Right. David asks. Mm -hmm. Why my stability going down here is affected after locking many mouths? How do I improve on this aspect? Is, is it due to need for force? Uh, need to call, call improvement. Oh, okay, you are having a uh, stability problem, right? If I assume that you have stability problem, that means uh, your balance, your core balance is not uh, not strong enough. So what you need to do here is you need to do different kind of uh, uh, stability uh, uh, balance exercise to mm. to overcome your stability. So yeah, this is they they have one exercise for doing this, but um, I can't do more. Okay, <laughs> so David, I need to yeah. add on something. Yeah? So David, mm -hmm. uh, there are many reasons why your stability mm -hmm. uh, gone haywire after locking many mouths. Sounds like a muscle endurance and stability issue. It could be core problem or it could not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to show you a very simple video that you can do yourself. Yeah, So I'll show you my screen. Eh? And then do this video. Eh, sorry, do this video. Pula. Do the test, follow the video and see whether you are able to pass the test or not okay uh, let me share you my screen now. okay ray can see or not ray uh yep 
Can you see? Yeah. Full screen, right? Is this full screen? Okay, David, you must first get a chair and then Get up from the chair using one leg only. Okay? Do it for at least 10 times on right leg and then do it on your left leg. Yeah? So when you're doing the test, the other leg is not supposed to touch the floor. Okay? You will be surprised. A lot of time runners, they have difficulty to do this test. Yeah? If you have problem doing this test correctly, that means you have muscle weakness issue and also your core issue. Okay, so feel free to do the test. If you fail the test, if you have pain when you do the test, if you lost balance cow cow during the test, uh, you can PM me or PM Ray. Okay. Yeah, can also. For those of you, if you have knee problem when you do the test, or if you have knee problem when you run downhill, you can do the test. Okay, the test will be very helpful. Ray, what are you doing, uh, Ray? Uh, I just want to add uh, see whether I can do this, whether you can see or not uh. Okay. What do you want to do? Just, just want to show them how to do stability uh, exercising when you do when you want to run downhill. Okay, just very simple one. Uh, you just open up your hand. Yeah, I know you cannot see your head on uh, my leg, but uh, you just you just need to lift up one leg. Uh, one leg need to lift up. Okay, one lift up, no one never lift up. You just need to go down and touch your touch the foot that you are on the ground, and you come back up, and you touch the foot. Another side, touch your foot and come back down. Okay, touch your foot. Touch the one is on the ground. The other one is on lifted. Okay, you just need to do this. Okay, you need to do this. Okay, this one is to help you to endure, endure your core, endure your core and plus your balance. Yeah, that's all about. Okay, Ray, we have quite a number of mm. questions. Do you think you want to answer the question first or you want to go with your slide first? Uh, yeah, look, go into the slide. We're going to slide first. Uh, later, I come back to the lacing. You want to show the lacing first? I already found the lacing video. Okay. Can. It, is the video very long? Uh, because we, we, we no, short one. 40 minutes short one. to the live. Okay. Yeah, short one. I will just... Uh, okay, very short one. <clears throat> can you see? Okay. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. I will run the video. To keep your heel from lifting, try the runner's loop. Start by lacing your shoes normally up to the last eyelet. Then, so look at the last loop. Crossing the laces over, feed the lace directly through this eyelet. Your shoe have a last loop. look one. Lock, look, look, look hole. The that is the function that you lock your lace. How to loops. secure your heel. Now, just pull the and then just pull tap, the loops, pull tap on it. See, like very easy. Okay, yep, done. Okay. Okay, I will continue this slide. Hey, everyone saw the slide. Yep. Okay. Yep. You. We have done. We are looking at the strike uh, at the quick strike, okay, quick strike line, short and quick strike line. Next one is running using uh your arm for balance. Okay, just now who uh previously who do I answer the questions? Uh, David Koo, right? Yeah, uh, David. David. Yeah, David. You must take point this one as well because this one is very important to you because if you want to reduce weight on your uh, reduce weight. On your bottom of your body to have impact uh, on the leg, use the arms for balance or uh, and also to reduce because arm balance is not only helping for your balance uh, while you are doing downhill in a different in a very a lot of corners a lot of terrains it also helping you to reduce weight because when you bring up your bring up your shoulders and bring up your arms right uh, you actually open up all your chest your all area all your muscles up so your body your body all those impact right will reduce when you are you when you're stepping on the ground so if you want to do a simple a simple test you actually very simple test you can uh, <clears throat> uh just uh you can uh, switch off the stop the screen 
Okay, stop the screen. You can stop the screen. Simple test here. You just need to, you just need to do relax your relax your hand, relax your shoulder. Put yourself at like this as a running normal pose, and you do this. Your shoulder do this, do this, and you open the hand also do this. Okay. While you are doing this, you try to jump. Okay, you try to jump by doing this. If you want to see the difference, right now you don't do don't do shoulder first. You just jump as normal like that. You just jump normal as like that. So you can feel uh, the whole part of this from your stomach, all this uh, 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 part of or all, all your guts, your muscle in your core down there will have vibration a lot, a lot of vibration. You will feel that a lot of vibration. So how to reduce that is to shake up your shoulder and now you try to jump so you can feel that your stomach and your legs that is no more reduced they still got weight but reduced you are reducing weight okay you are reducing that vibration you can feel one the most obvious is the stomach the stomach guts vibration okay so that means you're saying do the test uh mm. something and at, at the spot with your arm close and with your arm open so when you when yes. you do with arm open you will feel less vibration in your body and less impact to your joint okay so do the test yes. yeah. all right yes yeah let's go all back right. to the slide go back to the slide okay okay uh yep we are back to the slide so this is i already mentioned arms for balance okay don't lazy on your arms if for those who carry uh, trekking poles, please downhill without pole. Trust me, without pole. Keep your pole, open up your hand, just go free. Okay? Oh, yeah, because someone just asked better with or without pole. Ah, fuzzly. Okay, <laughs> I already answered the question. Without the pole is the best because if you go downhill with the pole, uh, with the pole, you actually you're using your arm and your shoulder muscle to poke to poke the ground so there is one impact already one impact one energy waste do you want that or you just want to carry up your hand balance up no energy waste and someone can reduce weight which one do you want you tell me <laughs> okay all right last one simple stay as i say stay relaxed and confident Okay, that means is running downhill is all about confidence. Okay, everything comes from confidence. It's just like when you first time you get your driving license. I know first time everyone go test a uh, uh, trading for car driving license all very very uh, uh what they call ganjong la or very worried la or so I think. So it's the same thing that you are doing running on downhill. So you need to get a license. So the license the license is called confidence. Okay, once you got you got the license, that means you are confident enough. That means this is one of the uh, mental mental of your mindset. Okay, please. Trail is one of the uh, downhill obstacles you need to go through. Everything races that you sign up must have this. So once you sign up, please confidence to do it and confidence to train it and confidence to try it. Okay, if not. All the above, the four points that I explained will just back to circle again, back to nothing. Okay? All right? All right. We go for the last one. This, I, we, we want to talk about the gears and shoe because this one also will reflect it to your downhill. You know why? First, your hydration pack. Why hydration pack reflected? Why reflection pack? Uh, uh, Jess, can you show my. Show my, your face. Show so for face. Yup. Hydration uh, pack is very important. If you start too much or you start things at the wrong place, at the different weight distribution, it will cause your downhill weird. Okay. For example, for example, you put your light things, your not heavy thing on the top, but you put your heavy thing at the below. That is will hurting your back and your back will be wobbling too much. And same goes to the front. If you're if you're putting too much heavy on left side and 
nothing on the right hand side will end up also warping your body weight at the one side and the other side. So must be very balanced when you're packing your hydration. And second part is your water bottle and your soft plus of these things. So make sure you keep in your pack is secure. Okay. Some people I see uh, when they run down here, uh, this thing are uh, bound, 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 bounce on the chest. I don't know whether they're painful or not. And then some mm -hmm. they bound, 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 bounce, just drop off at the trail and they never stop, you know. They just go like that, they just forget about it. Eh? So once they read the CP, they say, hey, I lost one uh, soft plus, gone case, gonna DQ. Okay, DQ means disqualified because of loss of a bottle. So why would take the risk? See? So secure your bottle. Don't drop it because some of them, when they drop it, I saw before, front runner drop it, behind the runner step it and just fall down and cause the injury. Okay, so this is the very first part. Third one mm -hmm. is the shoe. Okay, the one is the shoe. Okay, make sure, make sure you buy is a trail running shoe. Make sure the trail running shoe is, compared to a couple it does, is very soft and not stiff. What I mean, you need to have a very good stiff squat shoe. How to make, how to determine your your shoe is uh, uh stiff enough? You just need to twist like this. Okay, see, you need to twist like this. If your shoe can able twist until this front part can turn to the bottom, uh, I better you better don't wear like, the shoe for the trail. It even hurt you much. Okay, get a stiff shoe. Okay, sit stiff as possible and get a very deep, uh, deep lock. Okay, deep as deep as possible, as uh, as deep like this because our Malaysian jungle are very muddy and also uh, a lot of root terrains. So get something like this. Or don't get those small lugs. Okay, small lugs is for those flat trail and normal trail. Uh, if you are running normal trail, yes, can you can do this. But if you are going Malaysian, uh, like jungle, mountains, yes, we need something like this, okay? Very a lot of lux, okay? Uh, this lux can be a lot of design, like 180 or 360 degrees design. So mine, this one is a 360 de uh, design. That means if I step like this or like this, it's able to stop me and secure and any angle, okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Right again? That's about really? it. Yeah. Uh no need. Slide is and Oh, happy to idea. Question yeah. time is it? Question time, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh I think Ken and Chi Ming asked similar question. Uh, how you mm. run downhill fast on soft soft sand surface and uh technical trip, we can answer these two together, right, Trey? Ray? Uh, yeah, Ken. Uh soft Soft sand yeah, actually is much more easier than the uh than the hard surface. Uh, soft sand eventually is you same thing. Don't overstrike also because when you overstrike, right, you want to bring it up. Uh, the sand will all throw up into your inside your shoe. Okay, so try to reduce the the sand to go into your shoe. Just smaller, quick sand. Uh, a quick strike. Sorry, a quick strike. So as I say, quick strike higher your cadence, lean a bit forward, and you just can go free. That means body go free, free forward. So that is how you go downhill fast. So Chi Ming also any tips to run down for technical trails. Technical trails. Technical trails uh first uh is not the strike and the footstep first. It's your focus. You need to really focus your eyes. You see I run downhill uh I, I need to highlight this many 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 times please focus in front your your trail okay at least five uh three to five meter look ahead what i mean here is look ahead it's just like when you're driving a car okay do you drive your car looking at your bonnet no right you always look ahead right so same thing done the trail look ahead what is coming Okay, and then you can react what is upcoming next. So you do you repeat this cue every single steps, every single steps. Take 
point. That point you see it is, look at another point, look at another point, look at another point. So this is where focus, look ahead. Then you able to go downhill in any technical trails because you have been focused enough. Okay. So this is my tips. Focus. Okay. Um, Paul is the one asked us about increased pace when go downhill. But wow, Paul, you are very specific, lah. Ten percent, ah. And actually, I don't know how you measure your stride length, ah. Zero point eight to zero point six, ah. So specific, ah. Hmm. Yeah. Th this one. This one as a specific of numbers, ah, uh, is we we must do it when we doing practical, practical mm. cars. If we we go back to practical cars, we can use watches. We can use uh the video analysis to calculate this by. Talking, explaining this, we hardly to examine uh, the the whole entire uh, process. So the best here is we need to go outdoor and test it out. That so is really, the best way. Mm. Am I correct to say that uh, mm. the cadence will increase when we go downhill? Right? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Possible is possible. If possible, will increase. But a lot of people worry about fear and uh, confidence. That is where the lack, the lack of the cadence. Mm. Automatically, automatically, it's just like you just want to break halfway. You go, you go, you, you starting, you go very fast. But you suddenly you say, oh, you're too fast. I want to reduce. And I tend, I would not tend to look ahead already. I just want to look whatever in front of my foot. Yeah, this is where that you decrease cadence and you decrease stride length as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Paul, if you have chance, do join Ray's uh, class, yeah, offline, yeah, after MCO. Hmm? Yeah, after MCO, then you will. Oh, Saif. Oh, Saif, you did the single leg sit to stand test and your left knee hurts, yeah. So, for those of you, if you try the test and your one of your leg hurts, one or, or one of your leg cannot stand up, one of your lose balance, so that very likely the problematic leg has weakness, okay. A lot of muscle weakness. Okay. So, um, and then Saif later also asked, oh, how should I do to protect my left knee? So, when you have weakness in your knee, you have to do strengthening exercises. Yeah. But before I tell you what are the strengthening exercises you should do to help you, it will be better if you can come over to my office. We can do a more complete test on the knees. Then, only we can tell you which are the exercises suitable for your knee and then which of the exercises will help with your knee pain when you do the test because you're not supposed to feel pain when you do the test okay yeah so i cannot just simply give you any exercises otherwise you can just go youtube and youtube it and it may not help you you will end up doing you may do the wrong exercise and it may cause more problem hmm. oh mm, we have question Wet and slippery ground is this a considered repetitive question? Uh, right? Yeah, yeah, a uh, very very common question because Malaysia, Malaysia trail the ground is this kind of natural. You can find this everywhere. Yes, this <laughs> happens. This happens. Uh, every runner. Uh, I want to give you a very good tips. If you saw this wet and slippery ground, please slow down. Okay. No need to be too fast because the faster the faster that you want to go over this kind of terrain, the the higher the risk bar. Okay, because if you go fast, let's say for example, when you go fast to this kind of terrain, you are hardly to control your body weight and your body angle and your your leg cadence because when it wet, your leg will skip. Once you skip, you miscount your stride length and also you miscount your cadence. So what I recommend here is slow down. Like normal, if your stride length is this wide, you just need to 50% shorter. In your day, you just reduce 50% and you just higher the cadence. Okay, that means you want to increase ground time. Okay, increase when you're touching on the ground. Stay on the ground as possible. Don't to spend too much time over the ground. Because if you stay over too much on the ground at this kind of surface, your risk of falling and falling or twisting your leg injury is very high. So, yeah, this is 
that is my obvious. I always do when I saw this wet and slippery, I will laugh. <laughs> I will laugh really because I will see people do a lot of drama, drama there, shouting here, shouting here. <laughs> yeah, oh yo, ay, ay, yo. <laughs> right? Yeah. So yeah. So I will go back to my basics. I will still shorten the side length, but I will be high cadence and my body body stay aligned. When you every time you step must stay aligned. Okay? Don't over strike it. Okay? So yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm. Oh, another question. Zigzag pattern. Zigzag pattern. Uh. Wow, this is my own old style. Uh. <laughs> zigzag pattern. My own, yeah, zigzag. Uh, yeah, this is uh, those uh, un, uh, zigzag, those uncle style. Uh. Uncle, uh, uncle yeah. always said, uh, uh, zigzag style. Yes, zigzag is, yeah, can uh, because it's, uh, yeah, in in physics, in physics, uh, not talking science, really, uh, physics, science, uh, if you want to reduce impact going downhill, yes, correct, you are using the zigzag way. Because if you're doing the zigzag way, you are reducing the elevation of the angle gradient. Uh, what they call gradient, uh, you know the gradient percentage, yes. If you do zigzag, right, the gradients are reduced. So there are lesser impact. That is why they, they say called so called zigzag. Okay, whatever, you can do that. If you have t more time to consume, to finish the zigzag uh, according to that uh, time frame. If let's say the race, uh, you want to zigzag that until you cannot, you can't meet your cutoff time, so might as well you don't do that because might as well you use back the same technique, smaller the stride leg, higher the cadence, body just lean forward. Okay, just go down free, reduce weighting. So because going straight line, it's gonna be shorter the distance. Going zigzag, it's gonna be longer distance, but reduce gradient saja. So up to you to choose. There is no right or wrong. Okay, there's no right or wrong. It's about you. You choose. You choose the situation according to that uh, races or do the training. Okay. Here we have another question. Tips to okay. run downhill at night. Interesting question. Running downhill at night. Running downhill and I, uh, yeah, the uh, technique are still the same to the daytime. Okay, what are the 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 the, the important thing? Yes, you already highlight good headlamp. The the brighter the headlamp, the higher the lumen, and the better the lens. The the I mean the lens uh, If you have good you have good lumens, but you don't have good lens, also no use uh. You must have enough lumens like let's say 400 lumens and above okay for Malaysian jungle if you want to sh shine widely in front five meter and above 400 lumens and above and you, your your lens must be a good wide open long distance lens not those wide but only show <laughs> in front for the less than five meter okay make sure you buy the lens is shoot forward okay so that is the increasing the length and brightness that is also increasing your confidence to go downhill and like yes this one trust me this one you if, if it happens it it also works when i do night through uh night through workshop for those beginners most of them they are very worried about their going downhill when they're having the, the lights also all sort of things so after i borrow my lights to them they say Hey, why I can go so far? Huh? <laughs> yeah, that is already proven. If you have brighter light as shine as like a bright day, as a day daytime, yes, your confidence is just like a daytime. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So so as a conclusion, Ray, you're saying good headlamp is very important for downhill yeah. running at night. So you did yeah. mention about uh high lumen, you know, all these things. Uh, how high is yeah. high? Four hundred. And above. 400 lumens and above. The best. Yeah, so the best. 400. Check yeah, your 400. Lamp, uh, because so you check your headlamp. Because when you say good, it can be subjective. Huh? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. Some of them, they have 400 lumens. But the lens, the lens, uh, the, the mirror, the mirror of the LED, they shoot on the mirror. Some, they are very low. They are using flat mirrors. They are not lens. So the mirror, that means uh, they just shine, show in front only. That's mm. all. Uh, so you need to those you can shine forward far. That is called 
uh, high lumens with uh, good lens. I very yeah. hard to uh, explain uh, because we, we need to class, show right? you. Yes, yeah. need to come to the class. Then only I will show you how to do this and choose this. How yeah, to so compare. Firstly, firstly, if you are living in Klang Valley, right, uh, you mm. can attend the night trail running clinic together with Ray. Then that's the time he will explain to you the headlamp, the how to run downhill technique, you know. Of course, after MCO. Lah, if you want to know more announcement, you have to follow his Facebook page, Trail Running Coach Malaysia, okay? Actually, you can text me. Lah. You just put the, my number, the number, uh, send in my later, number. Later, you later. You watch la. Ah, ah, yes. Mm. Later. Ah, your Razif kacau me lah. Ah. I to do 50k. Razif. Ni out of topic lah. Yeah, do Razif. <laughs> this time we talk secretly, ah. We bincang ah. belakang, ah. <laughs> hmm, Saif. How should you land? Uh, where should you land your feet when you downhill? I try to land my heel for better stability. Is it right? Uh oh. oh. <laughs> Uh -oh. Uh oh, very slow uh -oh. on the hill. Yeah, if you land on hill, uh, oh, I tell you, it's very painful, man. The the more that if you if you land on muddy, it's still fine. You land on uh those sand, uh, sand like those desert sand, they are still fine. But if you land on those uh hard trail, uh rocky trails or mixed trail or tree, a lot of tree loose trail, this is uh no. You are hurting your leg a lot. You're gonna see just very soon. <laughs> so, so uh, best here is try to land. Uh, this is this is this is the this is the platform. Uh. Try to land, right? Uh, land on your toe first. Okay. After you land your toe, only you land flat, touch flat, and then you remove from the ground again, and then same thing, you touch on the flat. Okay. Mm. So you need to train this. Okay. Actually, at home also can train. You just need to do uh, uh exercise. Uh, Jess, can you move to the uh share screen? Okay, I did. Okay, can I show. Yes, I will share the screen. You will see this. See this. You need to do I this exercise. So then, yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yes, can see. Okay. So as you can see, this screen. This person, the toe, your 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 front toe must be as a uh, heel must exactly heel up, and you need to start to squat down. Okay, squat down all the way. Yes, do like this. So to make your toe stronger and then more more down down until you become stronger. So this is this is the way how you uh <clears throat> how you make your toe stronger. Okay, to stronger landing. Okay, to stay landing when you go downhill. Okay, that is the way. Don't land too much on the hill. It's very bad. It's very bad. Yeah. So yeah. part of the reason why uh people they are not confident to land at the front part of the foot, I suspect also their shoes lacing technique is wrong. They feel uncomfortable mm. because their toe is keep hitting on their toe box. Hitting the toe box. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So watch your lacing technique as well. Yeah. Okay? Lacing technique. Okay. Mm. Crystal asked about back pain. Why can get back pain after a trail run? Wow, this one, uh, I think just you need to answer this. Yeah, so Crystal, mm. well, the reason why people get back pain after trail running is because when you do trail running, right, you are not always running straight. You run side. Then you sometimes have to jump, you know, because of the obstacle. And then also sometimes you go to bend down, go up. So you need to have very good trunk stability when you do trail running. So in order to improve your trunk stability, you need to practice a, a drill. Yeah. So um, the drill can be learned from a trail running coach like Rayla. So you have to learn some drills to improve your agility, your body coordination. And of course, your whether your core is strong enough or not yeah okay and then also a running posture when you do trail running yeah your running posture mm. plays a very important role yeah mm. yeah so and it, later ray is going to share about how to uh, try out his online program during mco period yeah. hmm. okay lily asked about muddy terrain just now we already answered the question you can yeah play okay 
Ayah, what to avoid first when you're getting down? You see which one first, then you avoid which one first, lor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lah, <laughs> Joan. No, 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 just joking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, lah, joking, ah. So, oh, uh, but to be honest, ah, I don't know why you want to avoid. What, why, why you want to avoid? Uh, things like this. You mentioned group, ah, uh, rocks, roots, and water. If the organizer set up the trail, uh, the things is there. You must accept the the, the what they call the challenge, ah. Uh. So you need to go through that. So rocks they have rocks technique to go through. Roots you also have roots techniques to go through. Water, ah, uh, consider as a river crossing. That is a technique to go through. But I can't tell you now. I need to do practical to show you how to go over this. Rocks and roots and waters, but they have exercise uh, at home to do this. Okay, I just do this morning only. Just show I just show my students doing this morning to do uh three of these exercise how to overcome of roots, rocks and waters. Okay, so if you want to know, please uh later I will share the the, the content of the class. Okay,、yeah. we have already come to one more than one hour of our live. Ray, do you want to talk、uh, about um your running、yeah. running program? Yeah, yeah because、can. people when they、uh, listen to the live, they you got they got some more information. They also want to learn、mm. how do I have solution? You know, you all、yeah. this problem. I found my problem, but I need to know how do I fix all this? Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Ah,、uh, let me share a screen. Ah, hold on, give me a second. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. We saw the screen. Okay, yes. good. Yes. Yes. So, uh, this is the uh online trail running class that I'm running now. Already running, but uh, we are still accept uh accepting uh the people to sign up. And the best part here is, I today for those who are still listen here, if you comment uh I love trail later, I'll show you the mechanic. You comment. Or you send me WhatsApp. Yeah, I love trail. I will give you a free one trial session. Okay, one free trial session. Okay, so you will learn something new in in your indoor. How to use trail running, learning in the indoor. Okay, so what we do in the indoor, I will demonstrate myself. I will demonstrate myself to everyone. Each of all those exercise that you have never seen before. How to use trail in indoor and really. Accommodate. So this is how I do for every event. So I will look. I will. I will show the exercise, and I will look at everyone. Okay. I will pick and point. See where is your weakness, and I will ask you to do and where is your weakness, where to improve, and so on and so forth. So these are the the examples. Uh, the pictures that are our coaching. This is a one to one coaching. This is one of my students. She just want to focus, uh, something priority. So she just want one to one session. So I I also do one to one session as well. For those who want to do a、uh, specific, more specific uh training plan, yeah, you can do on one to one for this time being. Okay. So how to join? How to have this first trial? Okay. This first trial, uh, first free trial. You just need to WhatsApp. I love you, and send it to this number or you leave comment. On this live comment, and I will send you a registration link to sign it up. Okay, all right. Okay. So, so after you join, after you really join my first trial, if you wish to continue, you wish really really want to wish to continue. So this is the continue classes uh uh, uh schedule. Yes. So you will get you our class will be every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday morning. Six thirty to seven thirty. Okay, just one hour only. Okay, so within one week we had three times. Okay, three times is different topics. Okay, everything we talk is different. So the 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 fees were gonna be your if you sign up for day pass. You look at normal one is twenty, but if you guys continue after the trial, I only charge you ten for per day. And if you want to go for three times, like one shot, one week. Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, and you just go for twenty five and instead of fifty. Okay, just go for that. Yeah, and what you're gonna learn here, you're gonna have your strength method. 
for trail runners, mobility workout for trail runners, just like uh, uh, just now David Cole was asking, he want mobility, yes, we have, yeah, and I'm also we teach you how, yes, yeah. also injury yeah. prevention and recovery method, and also how to customize your home trail running workout environment, how to make your home like a trail. <laughs> Interesting, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And and then the other thing. Okay. So that is all about it. So I just want you to send me, I love trail, to this number. You know, you can pick up your handphone, snap this picture, and then you just send me later. Okay. I will send you a free agency link. So your free trial, it will be next week onwards. Next week, either one day, Wednesday or Friday or Saturday. Okay. I will send you uh, the link. Only morning okay? session, Ray. Only morning uh, session. Only, only for the morning. Because, uh, mm. uh, yeah, because of night time, a lot of people book up already. So I can't really want to run this because, uh, this kind of exercise will be, uh, uh, intense for those people already after open uh, book up process. So okay. I, yeah, I, I more highly recommend is before, before Buka Basa, that means early morning for those, uh, um, Muslims, uh, runners, you already token your breakfast very early in the morning. Yes. So after you, you digest, so you can do it on the 6, 6 30 a.m. It's mm -hmm. much more better. Yeah. Okay. 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 Ha. Huh. Finally, we come to the end yeah. of the Facebook live. Yeah. Thank you, Ray, for okay. sharing with us how to run downhill. Okay fast and efficiently. I hope you guys learned something. If you think this uh, video is informative, you like the video, can you say, can you say, give me a thumbs up or good? Ah? Yeah, this will help motivate us. Oh yeah, okay. oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, one more thing, if you guys uh, miss this, uh, miss this sharing and this Facebook live, uh, I will, I will upload this to my YouTube channel, okay? So I will share this out from my YouTube channel. You can watch and replay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So, so if you like, wow. yes. So <laughs> if you like the video, please put a like and subscribe my channel. It will be yeah. make us more make us more convenient to make a lot of videos. Okay. Yeah. About trail running in for Malaysia itself. Okay. Yeah, because you don't want to shock somebody, you know, talking talking to shock somebody actually. Yeah. Yeah. One loud. Wow, so, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so mm -hmm. coming this uh, month, uh, the next coming months, we're going to have very, a lot of exciting videos. Okay, I'm going to do a lot of home, uh, home exercising for trail runners. Uh, okay, so while we are still locked down, uh, locked down, listen, uh, locked down on trail, uh, <laughs> not locked down to go out, uh, we are still locked down in trails. So everyone listen here, we are still locked down in trails. Please don't go in. <laughs> Okay. Cannot go into the trail yet. Okay. So yes, of course you, you prepare yourself, prepare a body, and mm. then when after MCL lifted, when we are allowed to go into the trail, then we practice inside the trail. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Right. What is the YouTube channel name? Uh Ray will comment yeah, later the, and then after the Facebook Live. Okay. Yeah. It's the so ecosystem solution. Uh, the thing. Don't forget mm. to put I mm. love trail running and then mm. you get a free trial online class. Yeah? Okay. I love trail. Uh. I love trail. I love trail. Sorry, sorry. Okay, Chen. Okay. I think we have to go. Lah, huh? So if you uh. like the video, feel free to share this video to your friends. Okay? Bye-bye. Okay. We'll see you Bye. again. Bye. Hey, you can, you all can WhatsApp me uh, the number as well if you have any questions. The same number that I posted. Comment, uh. mm. Yeah, okay. okay. Bye. Bye.